Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy in the Philippines at our clinic in Manila. We know there's a lot to consider when looking at a stem cell therapy. It's, it's new technology, relatively speaking, um, and patient education is key to any type of new technology. But I'll tell you, after nine years and 16,000 procedures around the world, we know what the most frequently asked questions are. So I'm going to go through those. What makes stem cell procedures different internationally compared to the U.S.? And if you live in the Philippines, why should you consider R3 for your care? What conditions can benefit? What are the biologics? Where do they come from? Could you reject the stem cell biologics? Will they be a cure? Do the number of stem cells matter? What kind of outcome to expect? What are the risks? And how do we come up with our pricing? So what makes stem cells procedure, procedures different internationally than in the U.S.? Well, first of all, we're allowed to culture the biologics outside of the U.S. Um, that's very important because we can expand the number of stem cells dramatically while keeping the potency and activity of those stem cells intact. And because we can do that, the pricing that we can offer those procedures for is less than half of what it would cost in the U.S. Also, the conditions we can treat um, are much more broad outside the U.S. And the way we can treat them, meaning, you know, for instance, we can do intrathecal uh, in the spinal cord, and, and that's something um, uh, very, very helpful for, you know, a central nervous system problem, like a stroke or ALS or MS, something like that. <clears throat> Why consider us in the Philippines? Well, we've been at this for a long time, and there's a lot of things that we have put into play that are very helpful for patients. Customized options. A lot of clinics only know one way of administering cells, and that's unfortunate because some patients do better um, with an IV. Others do better with injection or a nebulizer for the lungs, intrathecal for the central nervous system. You know, it, it matters how you give these cells, um, and we know the best practice protocols, you know, to do that. 35% uh, of our procedures um, come from referrals, and I think that says a lot because people are very happy with their outcomes and the care that they received. So, you know, we get a lot of friends and family coming in as a result, and a lot of repeat, you know, patients. Um, I'll talk about that in just a, a minute. Um, all of our centers are in a medical clinic setting. The Philippines is no exception. We want to make sure that, you know, it's a very uh, professional experience and that everything is available <clears throat> to our clinics that, that they need. We do have a pristine history for safety. That's paramount to us. Uh, we want to make sure that um, the biologics being used and the, um, our first rate quality assurance is unparalleled and the doctors doing the procedures are experts. We do also include a VIP ground transportation escort from uh, the hotel and, and the airport. A uh, couple slides here of conditions. Uh, there's over 50 conditions that we treat, um, and these aren't random. Uh, we've had very good outcomes with these conditions, and you'll also see that in peer-reviewed you know, research studies, everything from um, Alzheimer's, ALS, MS, ankylosing spondylitis, anti-aging. Um, you, know, you might not have a specific condition, you just want to help with um, uh, aging healthier, and um, autism, cerebral palsy in kids, um, kidney disease, liver disease, GI issues like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, ED, um, failed back surgery. I'm going to try and avoid another back surgery. Then this can be very helpful for relief. Um, and, you know, a few more, all types of lung disease, post-COVID, pulmonary fibrosis, COPD, um, as I mentioned, uh, MS, also Lyme, lupus, RA, Parkinson's, scleroderma. You know, you can see the full list there. Spinal cord injury uh, and TBI. So the biologics that we use um, come from umbilical cord tissue from donor. And it's specifically, it's the Wharton's jelly kind of matrix area of the umbilical cord. That's where the most active mesenchymal stem cells are. Um, 
It's called allogeneic because it doesn't come from the patient, him or herself, to donor. We have not seen rejection reactions. Scientists refer to it as being immunologically privileged. It does have an amazing combination of MSCs, uh, exosomes, HSCs, hematopoietic stem cells. It also has billions of exosomes, which are stem cell byproducts, very active in cell-to-cell communication. Why do we use umbilical cord tissue as opposed to a patient's own bone marrow or fat? And the fountain of youth phenomenon is the best way to, to describe that. Um, if you take your own, uh, let's say, fat tissue, process it, and then put it into the knee or wherever, you're really moving furniture from, say, the living room to the dining room. You know, stem cells are usually as old as you are. Um, they're not as active as we get older. And what we found um, is that umbilical cord stem cells are very, very active and pure and potent. And that's one of the things we've seen is the results have just been better with uh, stem cells from that source. So where do they come from? Well, we have a program. It's from consenting donors after a scheduled C-section. There's no harm to baby or mother. Um, And from a scheduled C-section, you have time. You know, we do a consent. Our medical director does an extensive review of the mother's lab work and any risk factors. Um, The yield is very high because it's a sterile setting. It's very controlled. Uh, For instance, the amniotic fluid is completely present. The water has not broken yet, right? So so it's a very controlled process. The tissue goes right to our lab, which is uh, CGMP compliant, clean rooms, ISO 7 certified, um, very, very... uh, high quality assurance track record. So here's an example of a product analysis certificate from the the tissue from the donor. Um, It actually exceeds FDA quality assurance standards. This is a list of things that get tested for hepatitis, Chagas, West Nile virus, syphilis, HIV. You can see at the bottom there's sterility testing to make sure there's no uh, bacteria. and none of the tissue gets released until all the, the labs come back. It takes about two weeks. Will you reject umbilical cord tissue or umbilical cord blood? The answer is no. There's been a lot of studies on this. Um, as early as the 1930s, they were using umbilical cord blood for blood transfusions um, in countries, third world countries that don't have, you know, like a Red Cross. And sure enough, there was no rejection reaction, even with no testing. You know, like, um, you you know, if you're A blood, you don't want to get B blood, but it doesn't matter with umbilical cord blood because nobody rejects it. A study in around 2004, looking at over 100 patients um, who got umbilical cord blood transfusion with no testing or preconditioning, they had no rejection for up to four years. So many clinical trials have shown this. Here's another study looking at uh, donor to recipient ABO mismatch, umbilical cord blood, um, no problems whatsoever. So will stem cells be a cure for your condition? The answer is no. Um, you know, when you do a, a stem cell transplant for a cancer, that is not what we're talking about here. We don't treat cancer um, for things like ALS, MS, or whatnot, they can help dramatically for quite a long time, but it's not going to be a cure. If anyone tells you they can cure your condition with a stem cell therapy, it's just not true. We like to be very realistic with patients with uh, reasonable expectations. Most likely, patients will need a repeat treatment at some time in the future, and we do offer significant discounts for that Um Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment? They absolutely do. Um, We've known this for for years. Um, And when you look at the data on clinical trials on how many stem cells are best for certain conditions, a lot of times it's a weight-based calculation, anywhere from 1 million up to, to 25 million stem cells per kilogram. And it depends on the condition. Can you give too many? Well, you can't really overdose on stem cells. But you can reach a point where it just doesn't give you, I guess in economics, you would call it diminished marginal utility. You give more, it doesn't make a difference. But 
Anything more than 100 million stem cells per setting, we typically do not do. If a patient needs more than that, uh, and we offer up to a billion for certain conditions, you know, we would just need to do those split up one to two days apart. So what kind of outcomes can I expect? Well, it really is a loaded question. Patients are different. Their conditions are different. The severity is, is different. Overall, though, uh, we ask patients a year out, would you have it done again? Would you recommend it to friends and family? 85% say yes. And that includes everything, you know, in the, the bucket, so to speak. Steroid injection for arthritis usually provides two to three weeks of relief. These proce procedures often um, give uh, two to three years of relief, so it's pretty long term. Um, but some conditions are going to need it um, every 12 months um, to, to continue to do really, really well. It just varies. So these are very safe procedures. As I mentioned, there's no um, risk of rejection. We haven't seen that. There's a rare risk of disease transmission. We test heavily for that. We have not seen it. Very, very low risk of infection. We've, we've actually never seen a deep infection. Patients often do have things like low-grade fever, dizziness, lightheadedness, chills, or nausea. And those are things that typically resolve within just 12 to 24 hours. I do like to mention we don't use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. And, you know, we just uh, don't go there. But even if we did, there can be problems with tumor formation and rejection with embryonic stem cells. So we don't use those. I would not recommend having any procedure with those or induced pluripotent stem cells. They are not ready for prime time either. From the umbilical cord, we get mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Those have been shown to be very, very safe and very effective. And the exosomes, which come from byproducts of the umbilical cord stem cells. Um, we do get asked a lot, could I potentially get a tumor formation from having a stem cell procedure? We haven't seen that either. Um, and many studies have looked at this um, and have shown that, that these just do not have tumor formation. They're not tumorigenic. There's another study showing that umbilical cord uh, stem cells do not exhibit tumorigenic potential based on in vitro and in vivo studies. How do we come up with our pricing? Well, my goal since starting R3 almost a decade ago has always been to not have finances get in the way as much as possible for what a patient needs. We've always wanted to have uh, the Mercedes of stem cell treatment for the pricing of a, a Ford or a Chevy. Um, and because of our economy of scale, you know, around the world, that's exactly what we've done. Um, our mission is to make effective stem cell therapy available to virtually everyone in need. So when you come to us in the Philippines, you know, for like a virtual consultation or an in-person consultation, um, our stem cell doctors will look at your condition, its severity, and, and make the recommendation. That is going to be the fee. It's all inclusive. There's no additional fees tacked on. Only if a patient needs uh, sedation or intrathecal, where we have an anesthesiologist doing the procedure in the spine, then we may tack on an additional 500 uh, US dollars. But that's it, okay? So there's no nickel and diming with, with our procedure cost. Very reasonable, much less than half of what somebody would pay in the US. So we have our treatment center in Manila. It's about a half an hour from the airport. Uh, the process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors who will listen to your um, medical history, look at medical records. We have a patient concierge representative who will be dedicated to you to help with travel logistics as well um, as hotel arrangements. Um, now, let me reiterate on the cells. We do have a pristine safety record, no significant adverse events in nine years now. The quality assurance at our lab exceeds those of the stringent FDA. Uh, the viability of our stem cells is very high. We keep the uh, culturing below the fifth generation to make sure they're very pure and potent. Um, a lot of, most labs don't do that. 
We've won a lot of awards. Um, USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider, um, as well as 10 best companies, 10 most innovative. We've been featured on every major media channel you know you can think of. Um, but getting this, the process started with us is super easy. Uh, if you want to go to the our website for the Philippines, r3stemcell.com slash Philippines. Um, you can sign up there for the free consultation uh, on the calendar. Or you call us on the U.S. prefix, plus 1-888-988-0515. We'll get your questions answered, get you set up for the consultation. Thank you very much for watching, and we look forward to helping you.